Isn't that much better than looking at 10 minute charts? <laughs> Isn't it nice to have a bigger picture? Look at the forest and not at the trees. Absolutely. Hey, welcome to this morning video, the morning meeting. And this is for today, July 12th, 2023. Today is the day where some inflation numbers are coming out. Let's take a look at the calendar. That's all going to happen pre-market an hour before the open here, core inflation rate month on month and year on year, obviously, and CPI and everything, inflation, inflation, inflation. There will also be energy related stuff. So if you're oil or gas trader or heating oil or whatever you want to deal with, um, there's also another commodities report here. It's all coming out today as well. So be aware of that. We have some talking heads later today, right? So, you know, another thing, especially like after inflation data comes out, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they, they got their act together for the most part, but I cannot rule out that some of them will at some point make a remark about specific news item that came out on that very day, right? Because usually when somebody holds a speech, they love to incorporate the most recent news. And, you know, as I said, I hope that the Fed guys got themselves under a lot of control because they have a huge responsibility how they behave in public and what they say. So, um, yeah, but you cannot rule it out. You got to be careful. Okay. Then tomorrow, more inflation data. PPI is coming out, right? And apart from that, then there's only Friday, so to say, consumer sentiment. Said yesterday, I don't expect too much from it. But the inflation data is relevant. And now I have to um, close my, my blinds here a little bit because the sun is coming out. There we go, that's better. It's getting really cloudy now, it's still warm, but um, yeah. Anyways, let's take a look at, um, at gold hourly chart. And this is <clears throat> what I'm looking at. This harmonic pattern, this butterfly has been in this chart for a few days now. And the price is following through, right? It is going up and that was my expectation. Now we still have some way to go. And before that, I'm not gonna do anything. I want to see a completed pattern, right? So I'll keep looking at this one. And then the combination is with equities. You would expect that if oil, sorry, if gold goes up, then you might see some weakness in equities, but that's not the case. Okay. So now when I look at this, I'm starting to think this is not the right pattern and this is not the right assumption. So I'm going to remove this and this one as well. And this one as well, because the, all those arrows were expectations related to the harmonic pattern. Is there anything else I can do right now with this as I look at it? The answer is no, I personally don't see any harmonic pattern here. I don't. I'm just curious to measure the whole thing. And as you can see, this was like a 618 play down here. I personally don't play them. I find them way too simplistic. Um, you know, I like more complex setups. For now, I don't see a harmonic pattern here. So, We'll just have to wait and see. The thing that might happen the earliest time is probably something like this, right? So we're already fulfilling sort of like the triangle requirements for a butterfly, but now we need that push down and then we need to push up, right? But I think it's just way too early to draw anything here. It's just going to be way too confusing to do it. What we can see is obviously that this horizontal structure here had some effect of price turning around didn't touch it but you know had some effect on it all right let's move on to the nq 
the NQ seems to be a little bit more in line with my assumption what it might do, which is also butterfly. And by the way, if you're wondering what are all these patterns, go to the trading school playlist. They are explained right there. You should really take a look at them. It's just pure gold, these patterns. Um, so this one is also not yet complete, but it's doing its thing is actually going up, right? Could have gone down a little bit more and maybe it still will and it would be fine. But for what it is, it's it's doing its thing. But again, this is not a completed setup yet. So we're not touching it. In um, the Dow, yesterday I was um, looking at this guy. I was like, maybe that's something. But as you can see here, it was chopping, you know, at this 1272 level for a while, like two or yeah, two hours basically, just testing it out. But then it just followed through to the upside, and you can see it reached 1618. That's the line in the sand. So that one didn't work. Question is, <clears throat> if you look at a smaller time frame here at this at this level. Did it suck you in? Let me just activate our friend, the 10 simple moving average. The answer is yes, it did, right? But it also allowed you to confine your risk very well. So this is this is actually the 10 minute setup to the downside, okay? So here, what you get is, let me just draw that. You get an increase in volume from that candle to that candle. It's not too long after the open, right? The 930 opening candle is actually this guy. It opened right at the trigger level. And then <clears throat> you get your, your signal here because you have an increase in volume, even though this is pointing down, this always means there's an increase in volume whenever there's a little stroke here. And these are multiple in a row, right? So increase in volume, we close below the low of that previous candle, we close below the 10 simple moving average, which is this red line. And then we have follow through. Follow through is extremely important. So we get filled here to the downside and our stop is sitting right here plus a few ticks, right? So this is the Dow. I would probably have at least, at least five ticks, maybe even 10 ticks or something like that, right? You have to figure this out through backtesting, how exactly, whoops, what did I do? How exactly you want to place this, right? So <clears throat> what happens next? Well, the candle where you got in, which is this green pin bar here, it closes way above your, your entry price because you went, you know, you shorted it. So that is not good follow through. So what do you want to do at, at that point? You want to get out of the trade. So with the next candle, which is this guy, you're trying to get out of the trade, but it doesn't work. What does the rule set say when this happens, when you, when you cannot get out? You just close the position. You just close the position when this candle closes. Okay. So what do you lose when you close it there? You lose, you lose probably one third of your total risk. One third. Okay. So you tried this trigger level. On a smaller time frame chart, time to entry, you had your risk in check. You know this early, it's not going to work. Close your position, take a loss of one third of your max loss and walk away. And then what does price do? Let me just remove that. It goes up and up and up. There's no more signal to the downside before we hit 1618. 1618, as I said, line in the sand, this is when the harmonic pattern uh, gets invalid. No harm done. You lost a little bit of money trying this, that's fine, but you didn't lose a lot, right? So this is the nice thing about combining big picture, hourly, you know, harmonic pattern, hourly on hourly chart, and then timing your entry on, on a smaller time frame with various confirmations and then also proper trade management. So now that I've discussed it, I'm going to delete our pattern, our FIP extensions, and then we're off to a fresh start. Let's go back to the hourly chart. 
and see what else we might be looking for. This here, I don't know, this is also left over. Let me just remove that. And now, <clears throat> still looking at the bed, right? Do I still like the bed? <laughs> now that we have pushed up so much. If we had pushed up just to here and then we go down again, and it, it was trying that yesterday, right? That's what we were looking at. It's it's not going down anymore, so I'm I don't really like the way this is developing right now. I might delete the bed pattern maybe tomorrow or Friday, depending on what it does, but I don't like it when price moves so strongly against um you know the direction that I envision for that harmonic pattern. Okay. So I'll leave it on for now because you know there is nothing else really in terms of patterns here on an hourly chart that would pique my interest. Um, so for that reason, we're basically out of options. <laughs> we're just gonna wait and see what it does, okay? So let's take a look at um, inside another pattern, which is in a Russell. Now this one I like as well. Um, this is really, this this something to really look at today, I guess, because we're approaching the first trigger level, one, two, seven, two. And I'm going to delete this thing. Yeah, so this is really something to watch today, right? And pushing it up relentlessly, relentlessly pushing it up. And I want to see what happens here. Again, smaller time frame might be your best friend. This can also go to 1414. It can also go above. It can turn here in the middle, but this is the zone. This is the zone. You might even get a smaller time frame harmonic. You can get harmonics on a five minute chart at, at these trigger levels, sometimes even on a one minute chart. But let's not get too crazy, right? So that's that's really interesting. This goes up in a straight line. This easily went above B, right? And so it's now really just a matter of approaching D. As soon as it hits D, you gotta you gotta watch it. You gotta watch it for entry, right? Beautiful. This is really the one that gives me some hope. There's nothing here. This is still building. This would be in line <clears throat> with the Russell because, you know, this also might want to go up a little bit more, but this has the way to go. The Russell is so much closer to the trigger level. And then again, nothing else. And yeah, gold, right? Gold is also something to watch maybe today or tomorrow. Um, you're also getting close. So gold and the Russell. DAX, still doing its thing, right? There was the butterfly. Was it 1272? I think it was a little bit lower between 1272 and 1414 that it triggered. And it's been going up ever since. You got in here, you're well, at the pullback. This was the 618 pullback. You remember that? Man, I really have to draw this again. It's just, it's so good. This is so nice how you can how you can work with um, with the harmonics um, properly, right? So first between A, oh wait, between A and B, you will draw your extension patterns, and this is what I was just saying between one two seven two one four one four. This is where it had its turning point, and then the other thing was the pullback into 618. Let me just make this bigger. This was the open on Monday and touched one, uh, 618. Okay. And then it undercut the low for all those guys, all the cowboys who were like, oh, let's just put the stop right there. Nope, you're too early. The market loves doing that. And then it just goes up. 618 pullback just goes up. Beautiful. I should leave this on for now. This is really pretty. Really pretty. Beautiful. But right, this is this is what we're looking for. And right now, you know, with, with all the drop and stuff, I, there's nothing else I I see here. Our friend oil. What was I saying yesterday and the day before? 
oil has the tendency if the patterns work well to go up way above the high point of the pattern right we measured the height of the pattern here with this vertical line we copied that line we put it right on top and look where the price went right there okay this is what i was talking about this probably the sideways move of the chop didn't instill too much confidence i get it but if you're patient you will get there so let's just see what the move is the move is you get in at d at 70 let's say it's 70 30 ish you find yourself at 75 10. that's five dollar move it's a five dollar move it goes from last thursday roughly at the equity market open 10 a.m eastern time and we hit it yesterday at 10 p.m uh, sorry this is now 10 p.m sorry we're on eastern time zone here right yeah takes just a few days the only problem is and that's the risk you would have to hold it through the weekend right because oil closed here so you have to figure out if you want to hold it through the weekend but when you have a cushion here we are at 73 70 ish up from 70 30 that's more than three dollars three dollar forty or what it is that's a good cushion for the weekend of course the oil price can drop into the open on sunday but will it really drop more than three dollars so you have a great cushion here and you know you can just be patient hold on to it this even allowed you which is which is really sweet might not always do that to actually put a stop right at the top of the pattern right it didn't it didn't spike down it could have but it didn't so what 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 is next you know if you're still in the trade with you know partials I'm pretty sure you took some profits by now. Otherwise, I would look at you funny. Um, let's clone that again. Let's clone that again. And let's put it here. Now let's see what it does. Okay. Got to dream a little bit. Okay. Let's move over to Bitcoin. Um still chopping around i don't see anything to draw here it's just too much chop um and so yeah this is still in play this can always break down and come to lower levels and ethereum still chopping around right you got to be very very patient with this one um chances are you probably got stopped out at some point because if you put your stop to your entry if your entry was here and then you survived this um, and then it went up you probably moved it to to your entry and i don't know where exactly your entry was but there's always a chance you might get taken out i mean this didn't really i thought this had you know gone down to that level here but it didn't so maybe you're fine right but looking at this i'm not a big fan but sometimes the ugliest stuff that takes the longest might actually work the, the best <laughs> so it's always hard to say right it's the markets yeah that's what it is i mean looking at this anything else right now any other harmonic pattern i don't see anything i don't see anything so yeah that's pretty much it and then finally looking at the vix yeah it's still chopping around 15 and a half now it's at you know the higher 14s and that's where it is so let me just sum it up um nice to look at the harmonic patterns they are very helpful um and we know now the news are coming today tomorrow a little bit on friday i think friday is still going to be a quiet day unless there's a big reaction to the news coming out tomorrow but that's unlikely because once you have inflation numbers come out as as today um yes you have more inflation tomorrow but there's already some pricing mechanism that will 
you know, not have Thursday to be a complete surprise that still needs to be digested on Friday. At least I don't think so. Do you know what I mean? Usually, um, the true digestion of a of an important macro news release like inflation rate or whatever else, usually the reaction takes place the day after that because, you know, big money cannot really move that quickly, right? If, if there's really something that needs to be adjusted based on the outcome of the news releases, they cannot do it right away. Especially if you have something like FOMC, their stuff comes out or their press conferences like one and a half hours, two hours before the close, um, Powell will say something or he'll read something in the minutes and then there isn't enough time left for, you know, substantial, you know, positions to be adjusted on that day. So it usually takes place the next day. So the true reaction to big news, profound news, is usually just the day after that. Now, if I have two days dealing with inflation data in a row, I can say, okay, the true reaction might happen the next day. However, um, since inflation data gets released pre-market, there is somewhat ample of opportunity to do something, you know, using the liquidity of the entire session, not just the remaining two hours before the close, like with FOMC or something. Okay, So that's what that is. But since we also have two days of it, I think by Friday, everything has been fully digested. So Friday might be, yeah, another, well, quiet day, chop day, um, you know, just before the weekend, seasonal effects, consumer confidence shouldn't play a large role. Nobody expects consumers to get into a buying frenzy because of inflation. So there's no there's no expectations from that side. There might be surprises, positive surprises, but you really think we will see them right now? I don't think so. Okay, guys, I hope you found that informative. Thank you very much for watching and talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.